In this busy world, we may sometimes feel that everything is not going our way, and sometimes it feels like an unending loop. But we're not the only ones who are experiencing this. Even in ancient times, this feeling of frustration and being overwhelmed existed. I want you to not worry about these things for a moment, because wise people back then found ways to navigate these challenges, and their wisdom, known as Zen parables, is surprisingly applicable to our modern struggles. We've got amazing stories that will make you laugh, think, and see your situation in a whole new light. For a better experience, please use headphones and listen carefully. Let us open our minds to the fascinating wisdom of Zen. Once upon a time, a boy named Barnaby stomped into the peaceful Zen garden, his face as grumpy as a bulldog with a missing bone. He boomed, Master Wu, scaring away a bunch of butterflies that were busy drinking from a bright flower. Master Wu, with kind eyes, looked up from his steaming cup of tea. Lost your way, have we? he asked gently. Lost my way to a happy life, that's what, Barnaby huffed. Everyone on social media seems to be out there conquering mountains, swimming with dolphins, and living their best lives, while I'm stuck here with a to-do list longer than a grocery store receipt and a nagging feeling that I'm missing out. Master Wu chuckled. Ha <laughs> ha, the pressure to climb the best life mountain. But tell me, Barnaby, what if the best life isn't at the top? Barnaby blinked. Isn't that the whole point? The view? The bragging rights? Or, Master Wu continued, perhaps the best life is the climb itself. Each step, a mindful breath. Each sunrise, a new adventure, filled with the simple joys often overlooked in the rush to the top. He gestured to the butterflies. Even those butterflies, my friend, seem to be having a grand time without needing a five-star resort or a first-class ticket to paradise. Barnaby considered this. Maybe Master Wu was onto something. Maybe the best life wasn't some grand, picture-perfect ideal, but the way you approached each day. It was about finding joy in the everyday moments, not chasing some fleeting image on a screen. So, what do I do then? Barnaby asked, a flicker of hope replacing the earlier frustration etched on his face. Master Wu smiled warmly. Start small, grasshopper, he said, using one of his favorite sayings. Find a quiet corner in your morning and take five deep breaths, focusing on the sound of your own heartbeat. Eat your dinner with your phone tucked away, savoring each bite and appreciating the flavors. Treat yourself with kindness, even on the days when the to-do list seems like an unscalable wall. Remember, a happy life, like a well-brewed cup of tea, is all about appreciating the simple moments. With a dash of mindfulness and a sprinkle of humor on the side, Barnaby left the Zen garden feeling lighter, not because his problems had vanished, but because his perspective had shifted. The best life wasn't about reaching some unattainable summit, but about enjoying the climb, the scenery, and maybe even making a new friend along the way. Sometimes we get so fixated on the end goal that we forget to enjoy the process, we spend hours scrolling through social media, bombarded by images of other people's flashy reels, feeling like we're falling behind. But true happiness isn't about reaching some predetermined destination. It's about appreciating the little things along the way, the warmth of the sun on your skin, the laughter shared with a friend, the satisfaction of completing a task, 
even if it's just taking a walk around the block. So, put down your phone, take a deep breath, and start savoring the simple joys. We might just surprise ourselves with how happy the journey can be. One day there was a man named Bruno, known for being the bull. Bruno wasn't bad at wrestling. In fact, in the privacy of his training gym, he was a beast. He tossed his training partners around like rag dolls, each slam echoing with the joyful oomph of a man in perfect control. But stepped Bruno out into the brightly lit arena with a crowd buzzing like a hive of angry bees, and suddenly, Bruno the Bull turned into Bruno the Shrinking Violet. His throws became hesitant, his movements timid. Even rookie wrestlers, emboldened by the jeering crowd, could send Bruno sprawling on the mat faster than a spilled glass of milk. Bruno was drowning in a sea of other people's opinions. Every shout from the stands, every chuckle at his missed throws, felt like a giant hand reaching down and shaking his confidence. One day, completely stuck, Bruno sought out Master Hero, a renowned Zen master with a reputation for being a little mm, different. Master Hero wasn't your typical wizened old man sipping tea in a serene garden. He was a spry man with a twinkle in his eye and a fondness for wearing mismatched socks. He's also known for being observant. He knows the suffering of every person in the village. When Bruno, a mountain of a man, lumbered into his tiny temple, Master Hero looked up from his cup of something green and bubbly and said, Ah, Bruno the Bull, come in, come in. Heard you've been struggling with, well, uh, let's say tiny squeaky mice in your ears? Bruno blinked. Mice? No, Master. You know what it is, Master. They throw me off my game. Master Hero chuckled. Opinions, eh? They're like pesky flies buzzing around your head, right? Can't stop them, can you? But you can, he paused for dramatic effect, ignore them. Bruno's face fell. Ignore them? Master, they're loud. Master Hero grinned. True, true, but what if you were, say, a giant oak tree? Bruno stared. An oak tree? Exactly. A mighty oak doesn't care about a few pesky flies buzzing around its branches, does it? It stands tall, strong, unbothered. Now, I understand you're not a tree, but... Master Hero's eyes narrowed. Imagine yourself like one. Tall, strong, focused on the ground beneath your feet, not the buzzing in your ears. Bruno spent that night meditating, picturing himself as an immovable oak. The crowd's jeers became a distant hum, their laughter a mere breeze rustling his leaves. He envisioned himself rooted in the center of the ring, unfazed by the storm of opinions around him. The next match was nerve-wracking, but this time Bruno felt different. When the crowd roared, he barely noticed. He moved with a newfound calmness, his throws powerful and precise. Each victory felt like a gust of wind, clearing away the buzzing in his ears. By the end of the tournament, Bruno the Bull had transformed into Bruno the Unmovable Oak, and the crowd, once his tormentors, erupted in cheers. Bruno learned a valuable lesson that day. Other people's opinions no matter how loud, could only affect him if he let them. By focusing on what he could control, he found the confidence he needed to become the champion he always had the potential to be. One day, a martial arts student went to his teacher and said earnestly, I am devoted to studying your martial system. How long will it take me to master it? The teacher's reply was casual. Ten years. Impatiently, the student answered, but I want to master it faster than that. 
I will work very hard. I will practice every day, ten or more hours a day if I have to. How long will it take then? The teacher thought for a moment. Twenty years. In today's fast-paced world, we often desire instant gratification. We chase shortcuts and quick fixes. We ignore the beauty of the journey itself. Sometimes, scrolling through social media, we may feel disheartened by others' seemingly effortless success. But beware of this path. Comparison is the thief of the biggest joy you could have in your life. Comparison is why many individuals become depressed, lonely, and sad. Their journey is theirs alone, just as yours is uniquely yours. It's not a race to the finish line. The only finish line is death. This is rather a lifelong exploration. Every conquered challenge, every frustrating hurdle, every moment of focused effort is a victory worth celebrating. So the next time you feel the urge to rush through the process, take a deep breath and embrace the beautiful, challenging, rewarding journey of learning. One day, a senior monk and a junior monk were traveling together. At one point, they came to a river with a strong current. As the monks were preparing to cross the river, they saw a very young and beautiful woman also attempting to cross. The young woman asked if they could help her cross to the other side. The two monks glanced at one another because they had taken vows not to touch a woman. Then, without a word, the older monk picked up the woman, carried her across the river, placed her gently on the other side, and carried on his journey. The younger monk couldn't believe what had just happened. After rejoining his companion, he was speechless, and an hour passed without a word between them. Two more hours passed, then three. Finally, the younger monk could not contain himself any longer and blurted out, As monks, we are not permitted a woman. How could you then carry that woman on your shoulders? The older monk looked at him and replied, Brother, I set her down on the other side of the river. Why are you still carrying her? This applies to our lives as well. We all make mistakes and have experiences, some positive, some negative. Dwelling on the past, especially negative experiences, can be a heavy burden. It can cloud our judgment, prevent us from learning and growing, and even hinder us from experiencing joy in the present. Life is a constant flow. Holding on to the past, like the younger monk holding on to the image of the woman, only hinders our ability to navigate the present and reach the other side. By letting go, like the older monk, we free ourselves to continue our journey with a lighter heart and a clearer mind. Once upon a time, five monks decided to meditate silently without speaking for two weeks. They lit a candle as a symbol of their practice and began. By nightfall on the first day, the candle flickered and then went out. The first monk said, Oh no, the candle is out. The second monk said, We're not supposed to talk. The third monk said, Why must you two break the silence? The fourth monk laughed and said, Ha! I'm the only one who didn't speak. While the fifth monk just sits there and continues to meditate without saying a word. The story shows us that not talking was actually a stronger way to teach others a lesson than telling them they were wrong. While the other monks blurted things out, the quiet monk showed them a different way to handle things, letting their actions do the teaching. This was a real-life reminder of why staying focused is important. The story reminds us that being truly wise isn't just about telling the perfect thing, as it could only lead to embarrassing ourselves. Sometimes the most powerful tool for personal growth is mindful silence. The smarter you get, the less you speak. Once upon a time, an old farmer had a horse that helped him with his farm. One day, the horse ran away. 
The villagers felt sorry for the farmer and said it was bad luck. But the farmer just said, maybe it's bad luck, maybe it's not. We don't know yet. A few weeks later, the horse came back. But it wasn't alone. It brought a whole herd of horses with it. Now the farmer had many horses to help him work his land. The villagers went to him and said it was good luck. But the farmer again said, maybe it's good luck, maybe it's not. We don't know yet. Then the farmer's son came to visit and help on the farm. While trying to ride one of the new horses, he fell and broke his leg. The villagers came up and said it was bad luck. The farmer, though, just said, maybe it's bad luck, maybe it's not. We don't know yet. A month later, the son was still recovering. Then soldiers came to town looking for young men to join the army. When they saw the farmer's son with his broken leg, they didn't take him. The villagers were happy and said it was good luck. And the farmer said, maybe it's good luck, maybe it's not. We don't know yet. The farmer teaches us not to jump to conclusions because something that seems good now might lead to something unexpected, and what seems like a setback could be a blessing in disguise. One day in a forest, a man saw a scary tiger hiding in the bushes. He turned to run away, but the tiger jumped after him. The man ran as fast as he could, barely staying ahead of the tiger. He reached a very tall cliff and saw a strong vine hanging down. He grabbed it and climbed over the edge just as the tiger was about to leap at him. The man dangled from the vine, safe from the hungry tiger above. But then he looked down and saw another tiger pacing at the bottom of the cliff. He felt scared. Suddenly, a tiny mouse came out of a hole and began chewing on the vine. The man panicked. Then he saw a patch of ripe red strawberries next to him. He reached out and picked one. It was juicy and sweet, warmed by the sun. He popped it in his mouth. It was the most delicious thing he'd ever tasted. The story ends there. The story uses vivid imagery to paint a picture of a man facing the biggest fear, death. The two tigers represent the inescapable anxieties of getting older and eventually dying. The first tiger, the immediate threat, symbolizes the sudden dangers that can arise in life, the unexpected events that can threaten our well-being. The second tiger, lurking below, represents the inevitability of death. No matter how desperately we cling on, like the man to the vine, death waits at the bottom. The vine the man clings to is a symbol of our hope and the uncertainty of our existence. It's strong enough to hold him for now, but the gnawing mouse, a tiny yet persistent threat, represents the constant erosion of time and the ever-present possibility of things falling apart. Despite the terrifying situation, the man is able to appreciate the sweetness of the strawberry. This small act highlights the importance of finding joy in the present moment, even in the face of overwhelming fear. It's a reminder that life, even when threatened, offers beauty and moments of pleasure. The open ending leaves us to think about the man's fate. Did the vine break, or does he find a way to safety? Perhaps it doesn't matter. The story is about the experience, the fear, the struggle, and the unexpected moment of beauty. The story reminds us that fear of old age and death is a natural human emotion. But by acknowledging these fears, we can appreciate life's precious moments more deeply. We can focus on the things we can control, like finding joy in the present and letting go of anxieties about the unknown. While the story doesn't preach about conquering fear, it teaches us a way to live with it, appreciating the sweetness of life even when faced with the inevitable. This is Wisdom of Sages, and remember, the journey of seeking wisdom is never-ending.